Welcome to Whiskey One, the channel for the novice, the curious, and the connoisseur. I'm Whiskey One, and we have a featured guest today, Mr. John Kay from the Albuquerque Whiskey Society. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for coming by. Oh, thanks for having me. Um, so, before we get started, uh, first thing you should know is we're truly, truly like, like enthusiastic about this release. Um, most of you may not know about the Facebook group that we're going to talk about today, but if you haven't heard about CONUS and you want to know a little bit about it, stick around, stay tuned, and we'll get right into it. All right, folks, so we have some Balcones, not one, but dos single malts. Uh, these are Texas single malts from Balcones Distilling based out of Waco, Texas. And what's interesting about these two releases that we both wanted to share with the group and those following the Whiskey One channel is that these were specially selected by the Cult of Balcones, which is a Facebook group. I, I think I joined the group about the time that they started up, saw the name, and I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, what, what am I in for? But this is definitely a group of like like-minded individuals who really, really like Bob Cummins, yeah. wouldn't you say? Enthusiast fans, yep, for sure. Yep, yep. And you might see stuff like that with like Ardbeg, like Cult of Ardbeg, I've, I've seen yeah. that. Yep, it's, a, it's definitely a take on that, I believe. Yeah, yeah, so certainly not nothing new, but the Facebook group itself is, and definitely growing in popularity. People are super friendly. Uh, super knowledgeable about Balcones and super enthusiastic. So you're definitely going to see a lot of like bar shares where like everybody's collection is like on display. Don't feel too intimidated. It's really about being part of the group and really just sharing Balcones. Thanks for stopping by. Hopefully um, if you are new to the channel, we hope and encourage you guys to smash that like button and of course subscribe. Uh, you won't be disappointed. We talk all things whiskey, sometimes tequila, barrel-aged beers. We're actually in the process of making a Russian Imperial Stout called the Tsar in Black. So we just initially kind of got started with it. We have some several stages to get into. So stick around and see the final product for yourself. We also talk about barrel aging. Uh, we did a, a project where we barrel-aged Lafroig. Um, and we also feature videos from the Albuquerque Whiskey Society, also a very cool uh, whiskey group. It's local to Albuquerque and New Mexico residents, but we have different like single barrel selections and different tastings. So we definitely have some videos to share with you guys about those different events. Um, and we're a huge supporter of the Albuquerque Whiskey Society. Yep. They do lots of great monthly events and educational events and everything. So Yep, yep. And the people that run it... Uh, Daniel and Liz uh, are just really, really great people, fun to be around, and, and the events have always been like fun and enthusiastic. So without further ado, um, I will say let's, let's get into this. These are both Texas single malts. So I'll get started with the single malt that's been aged in New American Oak. Uh, this one was aged for 62 months, so a little bit over five years. So for me, color on that one is extremely dark. Oh my God. And you know what? Those of you watching, if you've never gotten into a Balcones, <laughs> this color is not unfamiliar territory. No, yeah. This is about the color you're going to get with a lot of their whiskeys. Uh, so John, do you want to talk a little bit about why we see this color? Uh, well, it's, you know, the Texas... Weather there is extremely um, variable. They get very, very hot summers, and then it cools off a lot in the winters. It's very dry. Uh, lots of shifts in humidity also. It goes dry to humid. Uh, so that shift in weather patterns uh, makes the whiskey age a lot faster in those barrels. Yep, yep, indeed. Um, and I didn't mention it yet, but the second bottle is also a Texas single malt. Uh, but this one was aged in X tequila casks, uh, specifically tequila casks that previously aged the Balcones Rumble. So this right here is the Texas Rumble. We won't be getting into this or doing a tasting on this on video yet. However, if you're inclined, check out the Whiskey One channel on Instagram. I did do a full review. 
courtesy of John, who let me borrow the bottle. Put this aside. And uh, you notice how much lighter this one is than the other one, even though it was aged for 70 months. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe, like I said, it's been already went through two or three barrels before. That's right. Uh, that Texas environment the, is really imparting that, that oak flavor, yeah. right? But Those it still barrels. pulled that much color out of it, even though their barrel was used twice before. So cheers, cheers. my friend. Yep. Here's to Texas single malt. Oh man. So one thing to note, this is bottled at 65.9% alcohol. This one at 63.3% alcohol. So these are not your grandpa's whiskey. Um, these are not like your stereotypical 80 proof whiskeys, your entry level, uh, just getting started whiskeys. These are, we're ready to have fun, get on the big boy ride. Yeah, these, these are proof of girls. Yeah. So on the nose, man, I'm getting, mm. Ap like sliced apples, those green apples that have been dusted with cinnamon. Heavy rounds of like toffee, like salted toffee or salted caramel, if you will. Mm. Yeah, like a cherry, or I'm sorry, apple toffee pie. Yeah. Mm. Some, some stone fruit, I want to say like dried apricots as well. Mm. Yeah, I'm getting light peach. <clears throat> Man, so again with the color, and we'll show this off on camera. These are some pretty sticky legs, if you will, like real thick, luscious legs. Yeah. We will show that on camera. Slow. Yeah, they are, yeah, exactly. They're creeping down the glass. They're not like gracefully falling, if you will. Okay. Right, nose in here, a little bit of leather. A little bit of leather, a little bit of tea, if you will. Yeah. Yeah, I was getting some black tea on it. So with the New American Oak, most American whiskey is typically aged in New American Oak, specifically for making bourbon. When it comes to making a single malt, there are no rules necessarily with having an X barrel or a freshly charred barrel. Um, so there's a little bit of flexibility with making what you would call a single malt. And until American single malt is codified, you could really expand the horizon of what you're gonna do without like feeling like you're doing something against the rules. You have to call it what it is and you know, you can do whatever you want to with it, but you just have yeah. to state what you're doing, what you're using. Yep. Um, and I, I think that's what it's all about, is the honesty in the product. And Balcones is transparent with yes. what they do. Like, yes, they make their own distillate. They're not mm -hmm. sourcing, which is great. Um, and honestly, if you get your hands on Balcones, even if you pour it blind, <laughs> you're going to know that you're drinking Balcones. There's Absolutely. like a it distinct stands out. note yeah. that stands out. Um, and these guys, again, being transparent... Typically, their front and back labels tell you everything you need to know. I think outside of telling like exactly what the, the grains were that they use, but their website does share that information. So that's really cool. Um, so going on the nose, anything else out? Yeah, I just, like I just want to curl up and live in it. You know, I, I, <laughs> I, I really, really enjoy this nose. It's the type of nose I can keep going back to. Absolutely. Um, and it kind of evolves on you, right? Yeah. You let it breathe a little yeah. bit. It's, it's warm and fuzzy. It's got a lot of uh, baking spices, all the fruit flavors. Yes. Um, Loads of baking spices, yeah. man. Like, you know, I, I mentioned cinnamon before, it's, but it's it like, to... a, like a French toast. Yep. You know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like that mm. baked apple pie, if you will. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to move on mm. to the tequila finished single malt. Kind of give that glass palette real fast. No, there you go. <laughs> so for those of you watching, John's just resetting his palette. Uh, I don't know if he's doing a check to see if you were deodorant, but uh, did, but, yeah. but for those watching, uh, there's actually a neat trick. You can actually like smell the the crook of your elbow, and that helps to refresh your palate, uh, especially if you just got through whiffing some 65 percent alcohol, strong proof stuff. Yeah. Ooh. Man, wow. these are very different. <clears throat> mm. Same style of whiskey, single malt, right? But very, very different. 
I get that, like, this one. This one I get a lot of fresh apple on, um, but not so much the spices. Mm, and I think that for me is where it kind of diverges. Like this is more apple, uh, apricots, orchard fruits, right? And yeah. this this starts to feel more tropical. Uh, not only because of that like tequila influence, yeah. where it's like briny and like lemons. Or I'm sorry, lime mm -hmm. zest. But this is also like buttery yeah. kettle corn. Yeah. And yep. hazelnut chocolate. It's got, the weirdest thing. I got the buttercorn. Yeah. Orange zest. I get like dry papaya and like mango. Mm. Yep. Yeah, I like the trail mix. The, the Yeah, yeah. A little tropical, tropical trail, trail mix. mix. There you go. But this is... Um, little, it just little, feels more little creamy. coconut hull as opposed to the actual coconut meat. Yep, I can see that. It's earthy. Yeah. It is earthy. Yeah, I can see that. But certainly like more buttery and creamier than this guy right here. This one feels spicy. Yes. This is like a dark fruit spicy pie. Yeah. You know, and this is a little more, a lot more floral also. I get like white chocolate on mm. this. Yep. So it's a little bit more of that creamier vanilla, uh, dusty mm. cocoa, if you will. Oh man, this is like very like. Very easy. Like I feel like this one's got more heat on the nose, at least for now, than this does. Yeah, this one packs more of a punch. Um, the first one definitely uh, comes at you a little bit stronger. Um, this one, I, I definitely can get my nose all the way into it uh, to try and find what's in there. Well, I don't know about you, man. I'm ready to like taste these. So cheers, cheers, yeah. cheers my friend. Let's go them. Here we go. Mm, mm, mm. Warming and inviting. Wow. Mm. <laughs> and the heat. It like it, it rolls. Like it yeah. rolls and builds, mm. man. Okay. This mm. is yeah, this is that like a music s'more. that just kinda like it's like a to... lit s'more, like you forgot to blow out the <laughs> marshmallow. Yeah, right. Ooh. Right. It's got heat. Yeah. Oh, but it's a pleasant mm. heat. Oh, it's good though. This is a, a Texas hug, if mm. you will. Absolutely. Right? Right? Oh, I'm gonna yeah. take another sip because man, that was mm. good. Mmm. Mm. That is one thing about Balconis, man. Every time I drink one, I just feel like I need to be in my zone. Like, hold all my calls. Don't give me anything to do. I just want to sit here and just be in the moment and enjoy this stuff. Oh, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, you pick so many things apart. So complex. Right? You're still thinking on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's got a very long, 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 long-lasting finish. Right. And it's just sitting there, like, rolling around in my mouth, you know, and as I... My mouth is uh, watering and it's just drawing out more of the flavor. It's yep. like, oh. Mm. Yeah, people talk about like long finishes. Mm. Yeah. I feel like Balconis has a separate category when you talk about Yeah, for finishes. a long finish. I mean, because right even now it's like, ooh, okay, now it's dried out and mm, it's still there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the nice warm caramel. Mm. That's what I get a lot mm. of. It's very like yeah. sticky sweet, yep. pleasantly it's, 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 sticky it's, it's, sweet. It's, it's perfectly burnt sugar uh, to yep. the point where it's it's just a little beyond caramel. Uh, but I want to say toasted not, marshmallow. Do you yeah. get that? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like a, it's you know it's burnt, but it's it's still it's the pleasantly burnt sugar. Right, um, right, and it sticks. It just sticks yeah. to your palate like through and through. Yeah. Uh, I get Earl Grey tea, so there is like a return of those like tropical fruits and that earthiness, kind of rounding out those like baking spices, if you will. Little, yeah, you I'm getting a lot mean? of like a stone fruit pie. You know, yeah, apple yeah. pie, a lot of spices. And I still get like more dried papaya, dried apricots, mm. uh, slices like uh, green, like freshly sliced green mm. apples, if you will, like right? yeah. with that cinnamon dusting mm. that just never leaves it's like oil almost yes. i like this man this is well, this a, is one for the books if you will um honestly like 
I, I know that these are going to sell out and they're going to sell out pretty fast because they're single barrels. But um, I really hope that there's a return to this style mm -hmm. of whiskey. So, all right, I'm ready to cleanse the palate just like you and get on to no, the next here. Oh, man, I had to go back to it again. Mm. Well, I'm not going to fault you for that. It, it's delicious. It, it's, it's different every time, but the same, you know. <laughs> it's classic yeah. Balcones, right? I'm, I'm getting a lot of, like, banana, uh, banana foster, you know. Yes. Mm. With like a um, like a Rocky Road ice cream on it, even it's yeah. it's that sweetness. It's almost like a chocolate nougat yeah. or something, right? Yeah, no, it's yeah, that's ridiculous. That's good. Well, well, my friend, I'm ready to move on to the next because we could really be here all, yeah, no. all day. I'm gonna keep pouring it and talking about it. Cheers, cheers. All right, so on to the tequila cast mm. finish. <laughs> mm. Mm. That is fun. Wow. That is fun. It feels like a, a scotch. It does. Um but it also reminds me of like a like a tropical fruit smoothie. Mm-hmm. Mm. Like made with a tropical fruit smoothie made with the like a cream sickle in mind. You know, very creamy tropical smoothie. Mm. But it's also got that like smokiness that the you're looking for in a yeah. scotch. You know, just where, like a nice where in light the world? Smoke. Right. Where in the world? That, I think it, did that come from? Right. First of all, so th when I said like this feels like a scotch, I'm mm. not kidding. It's very briny, tropical, malty. Yeah. Uh, but it's also buttery. Like that that kettle corn note came right back, but it also feels like hazelnut chocolate and a little bit of cream corn, if you will sort of all mixed in there um mm. it's it's rare that you're gonna get an american whiskey mm. that Trouble. tastes Trouble so on. close to scotch mm. little trouble hidden hint of trouble on. oh yes mm. oh my god i love that stuff by the way so anybody <laughs> traveling right uh or ever anybody who's ever tried that that stuff is delicious yeah. like it's nutty and yeah. oh it's, it's uh, just delicious Oh man, I want to go back to this. By the no, way, this is this is very good. Mm. You know, it, it gets better and better every time you go back to it. Um, I'm I'm enjoying it more and more. Yeah. Now, these are both high high proof whiskey. Yes, these are. Now, what I've noticed is certainly like your American style of whiskeys that are very high proof. It's going to be a ride. You're going to shoot your palate really quick or you're going to feel like, yeah, this really does taste like a very high proof whiskey. The thing about Balcones, and even with these bottles, they don't drink as high as their proof would allude to, right? No, I mean, it drinks like it's high proof, but it's not drinking like it's a you know, 64 or 63%. Right. Percent. right. Uh, it's drinking more like a... Closer to fifty eight percent, you know, mm. it's, it's definitely yeah, drinking yeah. a few percent uh, lower than it. Yep. Than it hits. Yeah. I, for some reason, these guys get away with it. I, I don't know how it happens. Maybe it's just the fact that it tastes so like deep and rich that it masks that high ABV. Yeah, I, I think there's it's it's there is a lot of all the layers there uh, covers up the burn mm. you, know, you notice the burn but there's just so many other things on top of it that you're like oh yeah it's burning but uh, yeah, i get all that other stuff too so whatever <laughs> uh, it, it rides right on through so it's, a, it's almost like it overwhelms your senses mm -hmm. um, you know so you mm -hmm. don't notice the proof you initially get those notes that are familiar and then it's like wait what is that and then what is this and then it starts to change on you, and now you get something different, and then you get something different. Like, as time goes on, this thing will just open up beautifully. Where Rumble is, like, really fruity. Yeah, it's a um, fig. I'm getting a lot of the yeah, fig. Yeah, fig. Yes, raisins. The honey. I get that. Super, super rich in honey. Mm. But for some reason, this feels a little bit like Baby Blue. And if you haven't tried Baby Blue before, Balcomus makes a corn whiskey that's aged nowadays for 12 months. It used to be six. Uh, but it has that like chocolate and 
the hazelnut and corn feel to it. For some reason, again, being a single malt, uh, it has those characters. So I don't know if they were kind of playing around with us. Maybe they changed the labels or something or trying to do something to trick us. But I will tell you, like, it does have that kettle corn note to it. Yeah, yeah, no, it, I'm definitely picking up buttery kettle corn. Yeah. Uh, Mm. Certainly different than this one though, right? Like Absolutely. this guy is different than this. Yes. Um, I feel yeah. like this is more more characteristic of the Texas, the Balcomas Texas single yes. malt. Yes, this is this is a, this is a single malt. Yeah. Absolutely, this is a Texas single malt. Uh, this right here is something experimental and different. Right, right. It's more experimental. Yeah. It, very different from their usual regime of Texas single malts. Yeah. Right. So. Like, based on these two, do you have a favorite? You know, I, I, so <laughs> let me tell you, I, I told you I got into both of these at my house already. Um, and coming into this, I, I absolutely had a leading favorite. But I only had one one day, and I went at the one the next day, and then went at them both again one day apart, mm -hmm. uh, trying them. So I, I like this one, but by only a point or two. Right. Versus it the, barely edges it, right? Yes. So is that just because it rings true to the fact that you already liked our Texas single malt and this just kind of ramps it up for you? Or do you feel like it's it's your favorite because it is a bit different than what you're used to? Um, I, I think it's my favorite just because I really love the nose of that one. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, I, I can I keep... I can go back into this nose and curl up into it. It's a very uh, good, semi-familiar, but also very different type of mm -hmm. nose. Um, whereas this one is just very different and fun. Score out of five. What would you rate this one and this one out of five points? Uh, because of based on price and availability, I'm going to go with four out of five on both of them. So it's interesting that you factor in price and availability. Usually I, I factor I in do. price. I do. But not availability. I do do price and availability. Mm -hmm. um, and I know it, it hurts a lot of good bourbons and different whiskeys, uh, you know, I may come across. Yeah. But um, I, I think it's important to do just because, you know, you tell someone, oh, that's a great bottle. That's the best thing you ever had, but you'll never, <laughs> you'll never get your hands it. on right. it, you know. Uh, so I, I don't want to... Who knows though? It might influence the cult of Balconas to Absolutely. do another one, and then as soon as that hits the market, you know, everybody's get grabbing that sucker. Yep, and then I won't be able to get it. And then you may not <laughs> That's true for a lot of whiskey these yep. days. Whiskey in general, the great the great ones, are just getting harder and harder to find. So when you can find greatness, hold on to it, relish the moment. Share it with friends. Don't be greedy. That is the Whiskey One philosophy. And I know you share that philosophy because you shared some rumble. So thank yep. you, my man. Absolutely. As much as I can. <clears throat> That's right. So scoring. You're going to hate me when I say this. No. Nope. Uh, I didn't factor in availability. I'm strictly looking at it through the lens of, is this some of the greatest whiskey you'll come across or not? Right? So that's my five. Um, I scored each one... 4.75 out of 5. Just on depth, nose, like taste, and this finish, I swear to you, you you drink it, you can walk away, go do some chores, come back, and it's still on your palate. Like that's how long mm. the finish is. Mm. If I had to sh compare this with, say, a BTAC, you know, Buffalo Trace, very limited edition bottle, this thing's right up there. Like, no, absolutely. As it's far as complexity, the, yeah. as far as uh, the proof goes, it, it hangs with It hangs the with boys. the big boys, right? Yeah, absolutely. So there was one last thing that I didn't mention and I should have mentioned earlier. Favorites. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a favorite. I hate to cop out on you guys that are like really looking for the favorite that I have. Um, and here's why I don't have a favorite. Both scored the same. Uh, and... Both are very different from each other. Because they're single malts, um, they, you can almost expect them to have a very similar qualities. However, these are very different. And I'm really glad that uh, COB did their due diligence and said, you know what? There's not one that we could pick. Let's pick two. Um, these are very different. Now, if you're into Balcona's Texas single malt, this will feel familiar. 
it will taste great and it'll be everything that you hope for. This is exactly what you hope for, right? Experimental, different, uh, something that you're not used to. And I'm telling you guys, if you're a scotch drinker, right, you really like scotch, this is the one that you're probably gonna wanna reach for. Um, that combination of Texas, or I'm sorry, Texas single malt and X tequila casks really like changed everything about the Texas single malt. And that's why I could not pick a favorite because they're just too different from each other and they just both taste great. This is one of those things where you're either gonna be in the mood for this or you're just gonna be in the mood for something different. So uh, that's kind of where I stand. Now for those uh, that are new, joining us and kind of hearing what we have to say about this. Thanks for stopping by. We really appreciate all the support. If you can, please don't forget to hit that like. And of course, comment. If you're uh, really enjoying Balconis uh, whiskey, let us know your favorite. Drop a comment below. And of course, let us know if you had a chance to share and taste this with your friends and family. Uh, and of course, if you can, subscribe to the channel. That really lets us know that you're interested in seeing what else we got in store for us. So here, we, here at Whiskey One, we really appreciate all your support, Whiskey Fam. And don't forget, it's about the one you enjoy. Cheers. Cheers. Shut up and sit down.